One of the most common questions I get asked is how much time commitment is involved with board seats and how many board seats should I hold? And this is a bit of an evolving area of the market because a lot of boards now are becoming quite uh, busy in terms of their activity. Even we're finding in the sort of the smaller end of the market, small private enterprises, uh, small not-for-profits, we find that the time commitment can actually be quite high. But as a general rule, I say to people that for each board seat that you put into your board portfolio, you should allocate on average one day per month per seat. Now that would be made up of a board meeting potentially, and that may be a few hours, but the real work happens offline. So you may have several hours of reading board papers, talking to your board director colleagues, assessing uh, situations, forming your opinions. And you know you might have ad hoc emails and correspondence that you need to, to review. And you'll find that there is actually quite a bit of correspondence that sits around each board seat. So a, a day per month is a good allocation, but it might be more than that. And particularly if you're chairing the board of directors, you will find that that workload instantly doubles. There is a lot more work uh, and maybe even trebles if you are chairing and trying to coordinate all the different board members and issues of the day. So when you start to take on three and four type board seats, you can see how quickly the workload can amplify. Now it's a big mistake to just assume that the board work is based on the number of board meetings. Often you'll be asked and required to serve on committees. And the committees are often where the bulk of the work happens in the boardroom. Uh, this is where you often write your board papers, you formulate your ideas on key challenges that that business might be facing. And so you have to take into account that you might have, let's say for example, eight board meetings a year, but you might have four board meetings a year based on committees uh, for a certain type of committee, and then you might be on a second committee, and so you might have another four meetings. So pretty quickly you can see that the meetings could uh, double. So you might initially think you've got eight meetings, but in reality you've got 16 meetings. So you have to take that all into account when you're assessing the commitments. And it's a big mistake early on in your career to take on too much responsibility, particularly if you still hold a C-suite or an executive director level uh, role in the market because you'll find that that time commitment can really get out of balance quite quickly. I was recently on a not-for-profit and you know there were some elements of that not-for-profit that weren't functioning correctly. Uh, there were some board members that maybe weren't carrying their weight. And so, you know, the time commitment was actually quite high. And I was finding every week I was probably allocating quite a few hours to that board. So, you know, it sometimes depends a little bit on the journey that that organization is going on. And you have to assess that when you're calculating how much the commitment's going to take. One of the key benefits is that commitment is usually scheduled well in advance. You know, a good board will have it scheduled determined for the year ahead and those meetings will be determined and so you know what dates you're going to be meeting and you can put them into your diary and you can get that all handled in advance. So that side of the scheduling is usually pretty good. Sometimes the meetings will happen outside of normal business hours and that can also be an advantage if you're an executive still holding um, a senior role. Now the trend at the moment in the market is that everyone wants to have more and more and more. Certainly there's a lot of executives who would like to carry a lot of board seats and I'm finding that really you know the more seats you add you've got to watch for this tipping point where the commitment just starts to get too much and things start to fall through the cracks. So in my opinion a balanced portfolio sits somewhere around four to five board seats and for some organisations that might even be too much but that to me would be a reasonable number of appointments to handle if you were doing this work full-time. I know a lot of executives who carry more than that five to ten and that might be a combination of non-exec and advisory board work. They might be doing it full-time, they might have an executive assistant that helps coordinate for them uh, because a lot of this comes down to coordination, making sure you're reading the right paperwork, attending to the right information at the right times. 
and you know you know certainly there's executives who are treating this as a, a full-time profession and hence that number of board seats is possible but I think if you start to add in chair level appointments you'll find that that time commitment gets extremely you know complicated and you just need to balance it out so you know, I think there'll be a trend in the future where um, potentially people will curtail how many board seats that they serve on. But at the moment, we're sort of se seeing it settle around those sort of two key areas, whether they're being sort of part-time board members or full-time board members. Ultimately, the decision rests with you. You have to assess your own commitments, your own work uh, life issues, how you're going to balance these things out, the timing of that boardroom or that, you know, organisation, how is it traveling how much time commitment is involved keep in mind that when things go wrong the the diary kind of goes out the window I'm aware of a, a couple of clients who have businesses that are in financial difficulty uh, regulatory difficulty and the number of board meetings has gone through the roof so you can expect that when there is a troublesome organization in your portfolio that everything can get out of balance and so you need to build those buffers into your portfolio so that you can manage your time commitment effectively remember that across the board your reputation is so important just the other day I was talking to a chair who said to me a particular individual just didn't turn up to a board meeting no explanation probably got busy in in that person's work uh, life issues you know have maybe overtaken there was some sort of reason why that person didn't extend common courtesies but it has a big impact on your reputation so professionalism is absolutely key being available to attend not only the meetings but the offline conversations that have to happen having some flexibility in your diary to be able to accommodate other people's uh, work issues because diary management is a key part of this and you do have to be able to have that little bit of buffer so that if an emergency meeting is called if there's a, a resignation of your CEO and you all need to get into the room if there's a PR disaster on foot and you all need to come together you need to have that built into your diary so that you can genuinely be a professional and do your responsibilities and add value wherever possible.